Uh, today I will uh, explain uh, Spassky style uh, hand rheumatological uh, examination. Uh, first of all, before examining, make sure that uh, the patient is uh, seated uh, comfortably and his hand are rested on a pillow or uh, a table. Uh, on any given uh, rheumatological examination or joint examination, the basic principle examining uh, first of all would be inspection, then palpation, followed by movement, and uh, lastly, if there are special uh, maneuver. Today, we are only focusing on uh, hand uh, examination. Uh, before uh, uh, doing any examination, uh, Ahmed, هل في أي ألم في يدك؟ الحمد لله. لو في أي ألم تعطيني خبر وأستأذنك إني أفحص يدك. So first of all will be uh, inspection and uh, try not to uh, touch the hand uh, of the patient and inspection would be looking at uh, changes uh, uh, for any articular uh, changes and extra articular changes. Uh, for you not, not to forget uh, any uh, skin uh, appendages, uh, we will start from proximal, uh, so, sorry, distal to proximal on both sides and comparing. So in a, first of all, we'll be looking at nail and the nail bed uh, for any skin changes followed by looking at the skin for any skin rashes. Subsequently, we'll look into the muscle, which is deeper structure uh, for any evidence of uh, atrophy. Uh, lastly, looking at the bone uh, and joint structure for any swelling or deformity. So if we started distally, we're looking for, for example, uh, onycholysis, nail pitting, uh, perianguil uh, erythema, nail folds, infarct, as an example uh, of some uh, uh, sign, uh, Guterin's papule or Guterin's papule that can be seen in dermatomyositis or psoriatic patches, hyper or hypopigmentation. The patient is having uh, a patch of hypopigmentation in uh, left hand uh, dorsum. تقلب uh, <coughs> So also we'll inspect, inspect the skin on the palmar aspect of the patient and there are no signs. For the muscle, the patient is showing evidence of uh, muscle atrophy uh, evident in the dorsum of the hand by gathering. Uh, <coughs> also uh, wasting of his uh, hypothenar uh, muscles and you will Hold for C muscle bulk. Okay. Now looking at the joint, there is uh, uh, an obvious flexion deformity affecting his third finger and fifth finger. To avoid any confusion, you should follow numeration and name of the joint. The thumb being the first joint, and the, uh, the index finger is the fifth joint. So he's having uh, flexion deformity on his right third uh, proximal interphalangeal joint and fifth interphalangeal uh, joint. <coughs> there is no evident uh, uh, deformities, uh, a part of those, i.e. Uh, boutonniere, for example, deformities, one neck uh, deformity or uh, mallet uh, digit. <coughs> More proximally, there is uh, uh, Volar subluxation in his left wrist as well as uh, right wrist. Ahmed, So also you are inspecting the skin in the uh, in the forearm and behind his elbows for any cutaneous or subcutaneous changes, like for example rheumatoid nodule. That was uh, explanation of inspection will move into the next step of uh, rheumatological hand examination that will be palpation. Now, in palpation also, as we have done for the skin, we are looking into articular as well as extra-articular uh, signs. You can, will start uh, for joints in particular, we're looking for uh, tenderness as well as swelling. So we'll start most distally with his DIP, Ahmed, 
بعد اذنك انا حضغط على اصابعك لو في اي الم تعطيني خبر <تصفيق> so we squeeze gently on his DIP and then we're going PIP squeezing them from lateral aspects one at a time اذا في الم تعطيني خبر and then his IP joint also squeezing on his MCP في الم Right. and then base of the thumb or CMC joint and for any tenderness then we'll feel for any swelling and ideally for us to feel uh, for swelling we are looking for, uh, for evidence of fluctuation and you need to hold the fingers from four direction from the sides as well as from above and below and squeezing from one side and feeling with the other hand for any evidence of fluctuation one joint at a time then going for the PIP again holding the digits from the side top and bottom squeezing from one side feeling from the other side for any sign of fluctuation and when you are going proximally for the PIP you need to raise his hand support from below with your thumb and use it testing for fluctuation with your index finger you can do it this way or you can do it the other way i.e. supporting it from with your index finger and feeling with your thumbs for any fluctuation one joint at a time and then holding the IP uh, the, the first MCP from fall direction testing for fluctuation and then you will move to the second hand doing the same again supporting from below with your thumb feeling with your index or the reverse <coughs> and then we've examined his distal interphalangeal proximal interphalangeal as well as the metacarpophalangeal joint and we'll feel also for his wrist for any tenderness along the radial bone ulnar styloid and feeling any pain if the PLM تعطيني خبر النر ستايلويد over the radial bone also over the wrist joint for any tenderness and then feeling for fluctuation for feeling for fluctuation you need to support the wrist with your fingers and putting your thumb over the joint line and testing for fluctuation by pressing from one direction and feeling from your other thumb and testing again the other side for any tenderness and swelling by doing so you would have had examined the articular joint and now then we will feel also the flexor tendons for any thickening as well as if there are any crepitus or friction tendon friction rub so deformity can take place in the hand because of thickening of the flexor fascia and for example dubitran contraction which will give similar changes affecting friction deformity in the fifth and fourth digit that's commonly happening as well as rheumatoid arthritis also they can develop nodule along the flexor tendon and you can test for any trigger finger by putting your thumb along the tendon doing flexion and extension looking for any triggering and doing it also from the other side for any thickening any tendon friction rub or any nodule and testing for trigger 
finger. So we have palpated the hand of the patient for signs of inflammation by tenderness, swelling, nodules, and also we've tested his, uh, we felt for his uh, uh, flexor tendon for any triggering. Lastly, we will be doing movements. Ahmed, to Qabda. And normally, an, an individual will be able to have a full flexion and his nails will be buried in his hand. Now, the patient is obviously having limitation, mild limitation in the range of motion. Uh, this is, could be because of limitation in the proximal interphalangeal joint or because of distal interphalangeal joints. <coughs> and then, so we can test for flexion or extension of his wrist. And there is limitation in his range of motion in flexion. And you can also look at the degree of limitation. So we have the kida, take that So as you can see also is having limitation in range of motion. Normally the wrist movement have flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, and circumduction, and the patient is having limitation in his range of motion. So we moved uh, at distal finger by doing fist and also flexion and extension of his uh, wrist joint. Lastly, we'll be doing power and you can test the power of the hand by doing hand grip putting your fingers in the patient wrist so okay. To sum up, we've conducted an OSCE style rheumatological examination. We followed the same principle of inspection, palpation, and movement. Special maneuver that commonly can be tested uh, and uh, in patients who is having rheumatoid arthritis or any other connective tissue disease, they can have carpal tunnel syndrome. So testing for uh, tunnel and phalen test. Uh, for uh, uh, median nerve uh, entrapment. And that would conclude a short style examination of uh, hand examination for rheumatology, rheumatological uh, patients.